Okay, in this video we're going to do an example where we find a t, the unit tangent vector, and the unit normal vector, and the curvature of a, uh, a given curve. So uh, let's take a look at the problem. So we're going to find t, n, and the curvature for r of t is equal to t, comma 3, cosine of t, comma 3, sine of t. So uh, it's kind of a corkscrew curve, um, or maybe you'd call it a helix. So let's, uh, let's see what we're gonna do. So first thing, to find t, I need to remember that t as a function of little t, or the parameter, is r prime of t over the magnitude of r prime of t. So it's a unit vector, it's the unit tangent vector. Um, so I'm gonna need to calculate some things. So let's go ahead and calculate those. So r prime of t, you just go component by component. So one, negative three sine of t, and three cosine of t. So that's r prime. And now I want to find the magnitude of r prime. So the magnitude of r prime is going to be the square root of uh, the sum of the squares of each component. So we go through and we square everything. We add them up. And then uh, let's close this. And uh, so looking at it, you can simplify this kind of a lot. Uh, one squared is obviously one. Uh, we can take out a nine and then we'll have sine squared plus cosine squared, which is Pythagorean identity. Uh, it's a very common thing to see with these types of problems. So sine squared plus cosine squared is one. So this uh, we can simplify to just square root of one plus nine, which is obviously square root of 10. Okay, so now we know uh, r prime of t and the magnitude of r prime of t. So we can write t. So going back, we know that t as a function of t. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write one over the magnitude of r prime as a coefficient, instead of like distributing it where I'd have to then deal with it every time I take a derivative, just gonna leave it as a, a constant multiple. And then uh, here's r prime. So this uh, for a given value of t will tell you the unit tangent vector. Um, so it's still a function, um, and you can some, sometimes graph it, I don't know, uh, but this at any particular point will give us the unit tangent vector, and now we're ready to find uh, n, the unit normal vector. So you have to, uh, let's put a box around that. So for n, we're gonna do t prime of t over the magnitude of t prime. So it's again, it's a unit vector, so we take whatever we do and divide by the magnitude of whatever it is, um, so we're gonna have to calculate these things. So let's go to the side again. So I need uh, t prime, uh, okay, so t is in the box. So t prime, I'm gonna leave the one over root 10 on the side, so one over root 10, and then I need the derivative of each component. So the derivative of one is zero, the derivative of negative three sine is negative three cosine, the derivative of three cosine is negative three sine. So let's do that, zero, negative three cosine, and then uh, negative three sine. And what looks nice about this is that uh, the magnitude of this looks like it's not gonna be super bad to calculate. We're gonna get that Pythagorean identity again. So I'm still leaving the one over root 10 here. Then it's gonna be the square root of zero squared is zero. And then we get nine cosine squared plus nine sine squared. Take the nine out, you have cosine squared plus sine squared. So that's just nine. So the magnitude of T prime is one over root 10, which is just hanging out. Um, square root of nine, square root of nine is definitely three. So we get three over radical 10. Okay, and now we're ready to write this. So n of t, so it's t prime. So one over root 10 and then zero, negative three cosine and negative three sine. And then divided by uh, the magnitude of this, which we found was three over root 10. And then uh, one over root 10 divided by three over root 10 is just one third. So we get one third and then our vector, zero, negative three cosine, negative three sine. And then if we distribute the one third, which seems like a really good idea because everything has a common factor of three or think of it as factoring out a three, whichever you wanna do, uh, we find that N as a function of T is equal to just zero, negative cosine of T and negative sine of T, which feels very unit circle-y I mean, it's definitely a circle, um, circle in like a, the yz plane because x is equal to zero. Uh, 
well, it's a, it's, it's a collection of vectors, but all their terminal points fall in a circle in the YZ plane. Okay, and now we want to find uh, the curvature. So we did a lot of work on this problem, and in the process of doing it, we had to actually find the magnitude of T prime, and we had to find the magnitude of R prime. So I think it makes sense when finding the curvature here to use the formula magnitude of T prime of T divided by the magnitude of R prime of T. And when we do that, we already have those values, right? So um, R prime is there, and T, oh, well, the magnitude of R prime is root 10, the magnitude of T prime is three over root 10. So three over root 10 over root 10, which is just three over 10. So we have found that the curvature of T is a constant value. It's always three over root 10. And that's because this curve is very circular, right? So uh, it has a constant curvature uh, as you go around it, like you really wouldn't be able to tell like uh, where you are unless you had some other frame of reference. You can't use the curvature to tell like everything's just gonna be constant as you go through. All right, well, uh, I hope you found this helpful and good luck.